Hi, I'm Sanjay Majuda. I'm a plastics and um, hand surgery consultant from Yorkshire in the UK. Now, everybody who works in theatre will know about the WHO Surgical Safety Checklist. Um, but for those who are new to uh, theatres, never been to theatres, I thought it's a good idea to go through this, give you an idea as to why we do it, the importance of doing it. Essentially, this is part of a, a campaign which is Safe Surgery Saves Lives. Uh, because if surgery is not done safely, it can do harm like anything else and wrong side surgery, wrong operation, things going wrong when people aren't prepared has happened, continues to happen and we want to lower that down to zero really. And this WHO checklist is a no-brainer. It actually is excellent, it's simple and should be adhered to and taken um, seriously by everyone in theatre. So there are three components to it. There's a sign in. All of these three components have to be read out aloud and the sign in is before the induction of anesthesia and I'll quickly read through this and give you a little background as to why. Uh, the first question is has the patient confirmed his or her identity, site and procedure and consent. So this is obviously the patient is awake and they have to have done that because you want to ensure it's the right patient, right procedure, right site and that the patient has signed consent has agreed to the procedure. Second question is, is the surgical site marked? Because once the patient's asleep, the patient will not be able to say, that's where I'm having the operation. You don't want to operate on the wrong side. You don't want the wrong kidney taken out, the operation on the wrong hand, etc. The third question is the anesthesia machine and medication check complete. That has absolutely paramount because if the anesthetic machine, the medication check is not complete and something goes wrong, the patient could die from this. So. Next one, does the patient have a known allergy? Is there a difficult airway or aspiration risk? And is there a risk of greater than 500 mils blood loss in an adult or more than 7 mils per kilogram in a child? And if the answer is yes to either of those two questions in terms of blood loss, is there adequate IV access and fluids plan? So essentially you're planning for things that may happen because preparation saves lives. So we've done that, patient's asleep, the patient's taken into the theatre. You then have to have a timeout, again, to be read out aloud. The first is, have all team members introduce themselves by name and role. This is very important. And the importance of this is every person in that team has to concentrate on that the most important individual in that room, which is the patient. And every member of the team must feel that they're able to speak out if they see something going wrong or if they think they can help when something is going wrong and they, um, something needs to be done. So horizontal playing field. So you've got to take yes, make sure everybody's introduced themselves by name and role. Next question is, surgeon and he's sitting uh, registered practitioner, which is the ODP, the operating department practitioner. They have to confirm what is the patient's name, what procedure, site, and position are planned. Now that's a repetition somewhat of what we've done before the anesthetic, but again, repetition is important because that's how you ensure that mistakes aren't made. Then anticipated critical events. The surgeon is asked how much blood loss is anticipated. Remember we talked about if there's blood loss more than 500 mils, more than seven mils in a kilogram in a patient, and if there's enough IV access and fluids, but we repeat the question in a sense. Are there specific equipment re um, requirements and special investigation? Hugely important. You don't want to start an operation in the middle and realize, oh, the important piece of kit isn't there. We cannot proceed to the operation. Preparation is key. And you're just ticking that off, make sure everybody knows. Are there any critical or unexpected steps that the surgeon wants the team to know about? And that's important. You're doing an operation, think mm, there may be a possibility that, that, that uh, an artery can be injured. Got to make sure is the kit available to repair the artery, or you're going to work next near to something that might compromise the airway or whatever. And the reason for that is to ensure that there is kit and availability uh, of kit and any other material that's needed to ensure that unexpected critical step were to occur, you can address it. And the anesthetist is asked. Are there any patient specific concerns because you know the patient may have 
certain medical problems that the patient wants everybody to know about and that's important what is the patient's ASA grade the ASA grade is a grade given by the American Society of Anesthesiologists and essentially grades people as to their fitness for surgery one being absolutely perfect fit for surgery and the higher the numbers go the worse they are in terms of higher higher their risks and that's important for us to know obviously uh, what monetary equipment and other specific levels of support are required for example blood you know do you need to have blood gases and etc etc the nurse or the odp who's the scrub staff is asked has the sterility of the instrumentation been confirmed and that's important thing but sterility is always confirmed no nope, you got to make sure they're confirmed and this will help you even if you're not in the nhs are there any equipment issues and concerns very important question for operations requiring multiple bits of kit again if you need a bit of kit and in the middle of the procedure you don't have it and you can't proceed with the operation or have to do something less than optimal because you don't have the kit it's not really excusable then we looked at the the surgical site infection bundle the ssi bundle you know is the antibiotic prophylaxis given in the last 60 minutes if applicable is the patient warm has hair removal occurred if that were to be necessary is there proper glycemic control has the vt prophylaxis venous thromboembolism prophylaxis been undertaken whether it's yes or it's not applicable and is there any central imaging displays for anything that requires bony work or maybe you're doing a urological procedure where you need to see the the, um, the correct imaging you got to ensure that it is there so again preparation is key once the operations finish, you have the third stage, which is a sign out again to be read out aloud. And before any member of team leaves the operating room, you've got to ask the, the ODP or the registered practitioner verbally is to confirm has the name of the procedure been recorded. It's quite important for documentation. Has it been confirmed that instruments, swabs, sharps, counts are complete or not applicable? Obviously, if none of those are used. But the sharps and instrument count hugely important. I'm afraid people still end up with um, instruments or so left inside them. This should not happen, right? Have there been any specimens taken? Any so have they been labeled, including the patient's name? Have any equipment problems been identified that need to be addressed? And that's important because if you've got a bit of kit that didn't work, you need to send it off for repair. So it's planning for the future. And the surgeon, the anesthetist, and the ODP, the registered practitioners, have to answer what key concerns for recovery and management for this patient. From an anesthetic point of view, are there any issues? From a surgical point of view, are there any issues? And the uh, practitioner talks about other stuff as well, for instance, pressure uh, areas, etc. And that is the three stage process, which is WHO surgical uh, safety checklist. It has been shown in studies that this saves lives, reduces the risk of um, operative complications. It's a no-brainer. Use it. Use it always. Thank you.